is per. Excuse the kind of strange camera angle. Something about sitting on the floor today took me fancy. So I wanted to have a quick word on buffering when you're designing this guitar rig. What are you going to do in the way of buffering? Firstly, what is buffering? People call it a lot of different things. The most common kind of description of it is it's a sort of tool or circuit that gets your signal back. Um, that's kind of a good way of describing it but it's not really a booster so a booster has that same kind of effect like a clean boost for example of the the kind of get your signal back effect but buffering does it in a different way so a booster is pretty much just pure pure clean gain pure clean volume and um, pushing the rest of the circuitry and um, what a buffer does is it takes a high impedance um signal a high impedance input and turns that into low impedance that means it can drive longer cable runs without losing as much clarity, losing as much top end, or without having the signal degraded as much. Just a pedal board, for example, if you're running sort of 10 pedals and they're all true bypass, the tone going into your amp is going to be very, very different than if you just had your guitar into your amp. Guitar into your amp's going to be a lot brighter, going to be a lot bassier, a lot more lively. Um, running through all those true bypass pedals and through all those long cables is going to result in what people commonly call tone suck. Basically just loss of certain frequencies especially in the high end and that's just to do with how far the signal has to travel across the cable which is essentially a giant kind of resistor and um, it does not really want to pass that pass that signal through and um, so you're going to get some loss so buffering what can you do and um, originally i was going to originally when i was putting this rig together i was going to build um, one of my buffers into the interface um, but then actually I just found that the buffer in the TU3 is actually really, really good. People kind of slate boss pedals a lot, and some of them, some of them can be kind of sketchy. Some of them are really, really good. The buffers in some of them, I don't know if they use the same buffer circuit in all the pedals or not. I can't imagine so, because the buffer in the TU3, for example, does a really good job in my opinion. The buffer in some of the other pedals, it's kind of just sucking tone. Buffer in the TU3. And from what I remember rightly in the TU2, we're both really decent buffers. Yeah, it's brilliant, so I'm going to buffer that. And then it's always sometimes a good idea to have an output buffer as well. So on a pedal board, especially if you're running all true bypass pedals, you ideally want an input buffer and an output buffer. The input buffer is going to take the guitar signal, turn it low impedance, drive the pedal board. Signal is going to sort of accrue some extra impedance. It's going to be higher impedance by the end of the pedal board through all the pedals and the cables it's ran through again it's going to lower that impedance and drive it through into the amp i didn't notice that much difference in my rig using an output buffer or not so i've decided for sake of simplicity leave it off there and um, but it's always an option you can have and there's always room to build one or, or, or whatever you know what i mean um, in my rig it probably helps i have the bob burke clean boost which is on nearly all of the time first in the chain on nearly all the time so that drives everything else a little bit harder as well so the signal is going to travel just that little bit further kind of uninterrupted and um, buffering in terms of the rack not necessary for me because i'm running from the pedal board up into the first channel of the eq uh, the eq unit and that actually has a valve preamp in it so again it's not quite a buffer but anything that i've lost i can kind of get back with a bit of nice valve gain i have actually found myself cutting cutting some gain actually at the, at the eq then it goes out into the amp and then the effects loop generally effects loops aren't needing a buffer Ooh, touchy subject some people will say you want a buffy effects loop other people say you won't depends on the amp and depends on just the amount of effects as well that's going in the effects loop to be honest with you but generally i i don't find a need for buffering buffering in your effects loop yeah unless you're running a big long chain in my rig it's all being kept pretty close to the amp so we're coming out back into the rack going through the effects in the rack and back into the amp um, you know stuff going on here there's internal gain staging and stuff going on in there so it's all kind of I'm not I'm not really losing any tone because of buffers the tone I am losing is because of some of the older cheaper digital effects units which don't have the same kind of fidelity as the modern ones but I can live with that yeah so buffering do you need them absolutely um, I would say you want at least at least a buffer on at the beginning of your pedal board you know what I mean Ideally, you're going to want an input and an output buffer because most guys nowadays, they're not running two or three pedals. You're running probably minimum six, um, minimum six pedals that, that come to me for advice. Usually looking at, you know, eight to ten pedals. So, yes, absolutely, you want at least an input buffer. Chances are some of those pedals along the way are probably going to be buffered as well. That's only going to help. Um, if not, or if you're playing big stages, you might also want an output buffer. 
But yeah, food for thought there, guys. That's my opinion on buffering. I am a fan of buffers when used right and in the right place. Um, also, interestingly to think about buffers is where you are going to position them. Um, ideally, I like to have guitar, buffer, jobs are good. But some units like um, fuzz units or distortion and overdrive units, they respond differently to a low impedance signal as they do to a higher impedance one. Fuzz circuits especially are designed to go right after the guitar because um, the low impedance from a buffer kind of mucks, mucks the signal up a bit basically and it, it, it can sound good but it reacts totally differently. Um, for example, the Diatone Crank Combo, it shares some similarities with it. It's kind of a low gain fuzz to be honest with you. shares some similarities with fuzz pedals. So after a buffer, it does react very differently to straight after your guitar. I actually like the effect of having it after the buffer. Yeah, if you check out the Iron Tone website, there's kind of my thoughts on that, but I like the effect of having it after a buffer. Uh, the crank combo works particularly well, so I had the buffer before it. All right, guys, until next time, take it easy. Be coming back, just a few more things left to touch on. Take it easy.